good afternoon to you all. Uh, I'm excited to be here today. And we have uh, the pleasure to finish the Ecomotion uh, and with uh, 25 minutes of imagining how the future of air mobility will look like um, together with my uh, fellow partners here on stage. Um, will, it, uh, will we have sky full of autonomous vehicles um, delivering goods, carrying people and executing different uh, assignments together with the mobility solutions that uh, we are familiar with today? Um, about two years ago, um, we were trying to think of solutions to Israel uh, traffic congest congestion problem. And uh, we established a um, cross-government organization collaboration called Israel uh, National Drone Initiative. In this initiative, Ayalon Highways serves as the operational arm of the uh, Ministry of Transport, together with the Israel Civil Aviation Authority and the Israel uh, Innovation Authority. Um, we've created a, a playground to support the local ecosystem and uh, we, um, we are also working on creating the future of uh, regulatory structure so we can see that to enable the, the operation of advanced air mobility. And I'd like to um, ask my partners here uh, to describe a little bit about their activity and how they think the, you know, uh, the initiative uh, contributes to the local ecosystem and maybe even to their own company. And we'll start with Arik. Hi, everybody. My name is uh, Arik Arbel, and I'm the CEO of uh, Quadpole Technologies. We at uh, Quadpole develop uh, tether drones in a box. These remotely operated uh, systems, drones, can hover in the air for essentially many hours straight due to the power uh, coming via the cable attached to the ground. We intend to deploy our systems in a wide variety of uh, observation applications, such as uh, inspections of critical infrastructures, uh, traffic management, and also securing mass events like uh, rock concerts and marathons. The NAMA initiative, uh, as it's called in Israel, uh, enables us to test and demo our systems in uh, real-time, uh, real-life applications, environments, without the regulatory limitations that usually uh, exist. I can give a small example of uh, something that happened just a few months ago in the last experiment in uh, Beersheba, where during uh, one of the missions, uh, an unfortunate terrorist attack happened in a nearby mall. The drones that were in the air at that time doing uh, delivery missions were immediately dispatched to the ground forces, to the ground police forces uh, in the field, uh, where instead of uh, where they were assigned uh, search and rescue missions. They were looking for runners from the scene. This proof of concept, this demo, could not have happened without the NAMA initiative that was there at that time. Thank you, Ari. Nimrod. Hi, everybody. My name is uh, Nimrod Golan. I'm the CEO of Urban Aeronautics. Pleasure to be here. Urban Aeronautics is an Israeli-based company that is developing and building a car-sized, sustainable flying car. We're talking about uh, an aircraft that has no wings and no external moving parts, no external rotors, and that's pretty much allow it to fly anywhere and land anywhere. Through over 15 years of uh, R&D, we have built a full-scale flying demo. For those of you who will Google uh, Urban Aero, um, you can see our uh, achievements through over 300 um, test flights, all executed here in Israel. Uh, and also our new concept of uh, what we call City Hawk, which is, which is once again the city, the, um, um, what we believe is the perfect solution to introduce aviation to the urban environment. So when you are, and, and this is all about, you know, when we're talking about urban air mobility, everything that happens not just in Israel, but all around the world, we'll, we're pretty much everybody here, um, we're facing the same challenges in, term, in terms of congestion. Um, when you are to introduce your aircraft to the urban environment, you have to pretty much integrate to the urban environment as it is in terms of the infrastructures. In that sense, the form factor is very important. So if you have a, an aircraft that can fly anywhere and land anywhere, 
And I'll make a statement because we're here in an automotive, automotive conference. Whatever you drive, each one of you, wherever you can park your car, I can land this aircraft. And that is a game-changing um, capability. Uh, thank you, Ruth. Thank you, Nimrod. Michael? Hi. Um, can, does this work? Put it can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Michael Lentz. I'm an investor. Um, I, we have two uh, different ways that we've been investing in air mobility. Uh, we have a business called Levitate Capital that has invested in about 12 businesses in and around uh, air mobility from uh, motors to infrastructure to the vehicles itself uh, to some software solutions, etc. And then we have a second business, which is actually our main business, where we invest uh, in much later stage uh, companies. Um, and uh, out, of, out of that in investment business, we've made one investment in um, uh, the drone space in a company called Skydio, which produces autonomous drones. Thank you, Michael. Sigal? Hi. My name is Sigal Weizmann. אני אדבר בעברית, אני חברת מועצה בעיריית תל אביב, מחזיקה תיק החדשנות והטכנולוגיה וגם תיק הנוער. אנחנו מקדמים בעיר תל אביב את השימוש ברחפנים, אנחנו מקדמים את כל הנושא של האבטחה, שמירה על התושב על ידי שימוש ברחפנים. אנחנו מנסים כרגע לעשות מספר פעולות בשימוש ברחפנים, אם זה כל נושא של שימושים לכל דבר שהוא, אם זה... פינוי אשפה, אם זה עזרה לתושבים, אם זה מישהו שהולך לאיבוד, אם מישהו הולך לטבוע בים, כל הנושאים שאפשר להשתמש ברחפנים אנחנו מקדמים בעיר. הצטרפנו למיזם הלאומי ואיתם אנחנו עושים, טסנו כבר יותר מעשרת אלפים טיסות. בנוסף יש לנו כרגע, עשינו מחקר ובדקנו שבעים אחוז מהטיסות בעיר הם להוביל סחורות והם או על גבי אופנוע, על גבי רכבים או על גבי קורקינטים, אז אנחנו מנסים להוביל גם סחורות על, גדי, על גבי רחפנים, כך שזה יוריד את הזיהום האוויר ויעזור לנו להוריד גם את כמות התנועה בשטח. ואני שומעת פה דברים חדשים שנשמח שיקרו בעיר שלנו. תודה רבה, סיגל. אז אריק, מה אתה חושב שהם המקומות שאתה רואה את המקומות של הדרונות שמתחילים על הנהר ובאמת? Okay, so I think in the near future, we're going to see more of uh, applications that are already there uh, in, the, in the market. And I will give three examples. First one is uh, predictive maintenance. Drones and other uh, ground robots are being used today to uh, perform tasks of uh, inspections in uh, industrial plants, in um, uh, cellular towers, and in power line utilities. Um, these dangerous, sometimes dangerous and tiring missions uh, are, are being done today by humans and can be replaced by uh, these robots. Along with, with the improvement in machine learning and AI, these uh, inspections are expected to become more frequent and more uh, affordable, involving less manpower. The second one is asset management. Current drones and uh, computing power have the ability to produce highly detailed 3D models of terrain and buildings. These uh, digital twins, as they're called, are being used to monitor progress in construction sites and to uh, document rooftops and other assets. These abilities, these abilities bring the asset management market to a whole new level of efficiency and accuracy. And final, tether drones that we're dealing with are being deployed al already today, but the need for longer flight time is real, and this technology has a solution to it. So I believe we will see more tethered drones being deployed in more applications with new sensors and payloads. And if we're lo looking for a little bit uh, distant future, then obviously uh, delivery drones are going to be there. Currently, these uh, drones are showing their potential in small scale, but in ever-growing rate. I believe that as, we, as regulators will ease their demands, and as the public opinion will embrace the technology, we will see this uh, segment uh, grow rapidly. Thank you. And if we'll take uh, one step further, uh, how do you think anymore your uh, platform your, um, co combines with, uh, integrate with the, with the world of mobility? 
Well, I think, Ruth, that this is a great question because it actually sparks the imagination of what we can do. Um, some of us will probably think that, you know, we're talking about a science fiction. And depending on your age, you would go back either to um, Fifth Element or Back to the Future kind of, you know, movie associations. Um, but um, one of the great things about urban or mobility is that we're going to see it happening in our lifetime. Probably the first use cases will be based on fixed routes. And I'm talking the, you know, the large applications, not the small drones, like Eric just described, which I think are going to grow amazingly fast. Uh, but then um, you know, the next phase will leverage upon everything that you know, these drones will build in terms of the infrastructure, exactly like Sigal mentioned before. Probably the first use cases will be fixed routes, for example, like um, airport shuttles. Let's say you're landing in JFK and you want to get into Manhattan. You can either pick you know, a black cab or an Uber and that will take you, on, during, you know, during rush hour, like 90 minutes. Um, you can do it in six, seven minutes. And we can drop you just you know, on the rooftop and you can go into your office as fast as you, as you want or go back home as fast as you want, but with fixed routes. Pretty much leveraging on existing operational routes that are that are operated today. Um, then probably the next phase will be EMS, emergency medical services, where such platforms that can fly in urban environments and especially those that can fly and land anywhere can actually hop over traffic and land just next to the car accident and, and bring the physician or, uh, or, or the uh, patient into the trauma center as fast as you can. And then it will grow all the way to the full-blown air taxi where this is the vision. You will you know, step out of the public library on the 32nd and 5th, and for some reason you would like to go and visit your aunt in Brooklyn. I don't know why. But then you'll take your phone and you will just um, click your aunt's um, address, and it will tell you go up to this rooftop, and then you will just get into the City Hawk, and it will fly you to your aunt's rooftop. So we're talking about um, use cases um, that will utilize mobility as a service. We're not aiming for uh, personal ownership, but mobility as a service. With regard to what Sigal said, I think that Tel Aviv is one of the perfect places for a better, you know, for a better site to push forward such kind of applications where we can fly people from um, Ben Gurion, RJFK, okay into Tel Aviv or the surroundings even of Tel Aviv, even here. even here, and all around to, to have you know, a network of, of vertiports all around Tel Aviv and just bring people right. in and out in no time. Um, this is our dream. Thank you. So Michael, you hear that? And is it mm -hmm. science fiction or do you, do you uh, look at that as a high risk investment or do you think that's our uh, future? Uh, I, I think it uh, it completely uh, depends on the sector uh, that, 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 that you're talking about. Flow. So some of the um, uh, some of the sectors uh, like the consumer and the military space are obviously not science fiction. There's billions of dollars of drones sold every year. Um, you know, uh, like like we talked about, uh, our view is that the next sector that is taking off is the enterprise space, um, where uh, in our view the linchpin technology is autonomy. Uh, autonomy has been very, very difficult uh, on the ground. It's a lot easier uh, to do in the in in uh, uh, in uh, the third dimension, and uh, and once you remove the the pilot, uh, then the human pilot, then all of a sudden, uh, you know, inspectors or security uh, folks, people that have uh, you know normal jobs, can all of a sudden utilize these drones very, very effectively. And, and we think that that's a space that is in the middle of, 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 of taking off right now. So it's definitely not science fiction. Um, you know, the delivery uh, space uh, is, uh, is also something we can very much see, but there you've got uh, real regulatory risk and, um, and, and uh, as, as big of an issue in our opinion is uh, customer acceptance will Will uh, the average citizen be comfortable having these things zip all around in uh, in cities? You know how how can uh, cities manage uh, the 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 airspace? How can you avoid 
uh, crashes, et cetera. So there's there's quite a bit to to work f through, and then um, you know the the, the passenger uh, uh, drone space is the most exciting uh, to a lot of people. Uh, it's also the one that that is sort of uh, you know the the hardest, and the people that pull it off will will have uh, you know unbelievable businesses. But it's it's definitely um, you know the hard the hardest sector. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, you already taking me to the, my next questions and my final one. Um, I will do a, a quick, um, a quick question round. Um, what is the? What do you think uh, is the main challenge that uh, we should, uh, as a government uh, initiative, should focus on to promote the the ecosystem or to help this dream come true? Um, the the main one in, from your point of view. So, Sigal. מה שאנחנו עומד לפנינו כרגע זה לשנות את הרגולציה. הרגולציה מבחינה ממשלתית, לאפשר לנו להטיס יותר רחפנים בלילה, לאפשר לנו נתיבי טיסה, לפתוח לנו את האפשרות לטוס מעל ערים. כרגע אין לנו אישור לטוס בתוך ערים צפופות, רק על חוף ים או בתוך, על פארק, כל דבר... כל דבר צריך אישורים, אנחנו על זה צריכים לעבוד במלוא המרץ כדי שזה יאפשר לנו לעלות שלב ויש לנו הרבה אתגרים בנושא אבטחה וראינו את זה עם הפיגוע האחרון שהיה בתל אביב, כמה חשוב לנו השימוש ברחפנים, לצה"ל היה אפשרות להפעיל מיד רחפנים ולנו בעיר תל אביב שיש רחפנים לא יכלנו להעלות אותם כי לא היה אישור מבצעי אז הנושא הרגולטיבי מאוד מאוד חשוב לקדם אותו כרגע. Thank you, regulation. מאוד. Thank you. So Israel is already known as a startup nation, right? We're all familiar with this term. Um, I would suggest a new term, aviation nation or mobility nation. Actually, everything that is happening behind this wall and in this room states that we are pretty much strong in that area. Uh, we cannot do that alone. We have to, um, and, and, and here is the opportunity for the government to support the ecosystem, support the, the collaboration of, um, of the domestic, we either, you know, um, academy or uh, industry to, to connect with a worldwide ecosystem. This is the only way that we can drive that forward and really utilize the, the, the essence and the, um, all the uh, talent that uh, here in Israel. So pushing forward the ecosystem through collaboration, this is something that the government can really help us. Thank you. Arik. Okay. I think the NAMA initiative has uh, demonstrated the potential of drones in uh, many applications and many lessons have been learned. However, the, the distance between a fully commercial drone for delivery service in Israel is yet far. And I think that if the government wants to make this uh, service commercially avail available, it needs to take it as a challenge uh, on itself to make an intended use for, with drones for delivery for the own benefit of the government. This will make this a permanent uh, service that other users can jump on and take advantage of it whenever they need. And finally, I believe this will make this service something uh, viable, permanent, affordable uh, for everybody. Michael, do you have a... Yeah, I mean, um, I think I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to be very practical. I think one of the biggest issues that uh, drone companies are going to have is noise. Um, I think um, once we're through the technical issues, the regulatory issues, et cetera, there's a big question on whether um, we can get the noise low enough that people will be very comfortable with drones wor uh, you know, all around. And I think it's, um, it's a big challenge to remove uh, the, or to, to get the noise level to a uh, level that uh, I think consumers will be comfortable with. Uh, and that's, that's an area that is not solved. Uh, and if, uh, if, uh, if, fo if folks here can figure out how to solve that problem, I think um, they're removing a huge barrier. Okay. So uh, it's time to thank you all uh, for participating and you for uh, listening. And... Um, just to remember that the sky is no longer the limit. <laughs>